This is the worst adaptation of The Hunchback of Notre Dame, bar none. And I sure as shit haven't seen every adaptation, but I don't need to. This is that bad. The bells all ring whenever you're around. They ding dong ding. What a wonderful thing, it's my favorite sound. Ding ding dong. going back into the world of golden films when they were doing it on their own without Good Times Entertainment. But the sad thing is, they're probably providing more of those times when they were with them. Yeah. Welcome to Paris, to Paris in spring. Ooh la la, it's a city of lights. Well, they nailed the tone within the first few seconds. I'm sure this is how Victor Hugo always imagined it. There's always just something about the style they use on these solo Golden Films movies that just makes me think Snap, Crackle, and Pop, or the Keebler Elves or something. To be technical, it's very 90s commercial animation-y. It's tough times for the Beast from the first Golden Films Beauty and the Beast, since Beauty's apparently left him for her brother. Then let him die! Wow, what choppy animation! Glad you chose to showcase that shit right away. Oh yeah, and this song sucks, so it can fuck off. And here's a weird coincidence, like the secret of the Hunchback, this too was animated by Hong Ying Animation Company. I guess they were really busy with shitting out cheap Hunchback adaptations around this time, as this was also a 96 release. And who really needs to go to the theater to see the Disney one when you've got this shit on video? The food is delicious, it's pure gastronomy, but don't ask what you're eating cause it's Paris Mon Ami. Also like The Secret of the Hunchback, the cast list for this movie is apparently a mystery. But seeing as what a masterpiece this is, they probably all asked not to be credited. And I know the animation in Secret of the Hunchback is hardly mind-blowing or anything, but it looked amazing compared to this error-ridden pile of filth. I guess the UAV production wasn't quite as stingy. A chateau is a house. Was that seriously supposed to be a joke just because it sounds a little like toe at the end? Go fuck yourself. We aren't even two minutes in and they're already recycling animation and it was piss poor animation that looked horrible in the first place. Well, the drunken camera eventually finds its way over to the bell tower, and you might be thinking it's time to meet Quasimodo, but don't be silly, he's not important to the hunchback of Notre Dame. Nah, fuck him, we've got to meet annoying bats. The bats are in the belfry. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a joke! Cool it, you dingbat, I hear something. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is this? The Big Bang Theory? Oh. Oh wow. I feel bad for calling Frollo and the Secret of the Hunchback Gaston with facial hair now. This really is just Gaston with a curly mustache. Fucking bravo, golden guys. By the way, this crackle-looking motherfucker here is Pierre. Yes, really, Pierre's just been relegated to Frollo's dorky sidekick. The secret of the Hunchback was somewhere in the ballpark with this character. This is just giving a name from the book to a completely different person. He's not dancing, he must treat illegal. Did I not outlaw? singing after dark? Wow. <laughs> Uh-oh. Have I not prohibited all forms of recreation and pleasure? But what of magic, sir? Is it forbidden as well? Magic? I am not keen of mine. You're not too keen on scene continuity either, are ya? All this trash is apparently even starting to make the camera tear up. Or the focus didn't think this abomination was hurting your eyes enough as it was. That gypsy woman's instruments, they seem to live. Whether she has magic, I cannot say for certain. She might have just met living instruments in another country. And yes, 
magic exists, and we're just going to exposition dump it on you for a reveal. Truly wondrous storytelling here. My father, the Baron, will not accept such flagrant disobedience. Can you stop yelling? So, Son of Baron is yet another thing we can add on the What Frollo Does list. Though, they don't actually call him Frollo in this one. <gasps> Captain Jean-Claude! He's just Jean-Claude! Though Claude was Frollo's first name and he's filling in that same villain role, so yeah, that's who he is. Also, his father, the Baron, is fat and likes to eat! That's the joke! Every single damn time with him, so get to laughing! Also of note, who puts fish in a fruit bowl? What a freak! <laughs> you try all you want, Baron of Natra Fuck, you'll never be Friar Tuck from Rocket Robin Hood. <laughs> This is seriously something they do in every one of these Golden Films productions? Random cartoon noises? You're really making your Beauty and the Beast that you did with Good Times look like a masterpiece! There's your first look at the Hunchback. If you thought they didn't show him in the first scene because they were building to something, well, did you ever give this shit way too much credit? And look at how grotesque he is! Man, did they ever not try in the slightest with this! The best way to show that he has beauty on the inside is by giving him beauty on the outside! Psh. Quaz, where you going? Hey, didn't even give us any breakfast. Be careful, man. What dimension are we talking to you from? It's night where you are, but it's day over here. It's almost like they were too lazy to animate us in any other locations. Make way for Le Grand Fromage. <laughs> I love talking without opening my mouth. Ha ha ha, random French word. Mad, not funny. Ha ha. Oh boy. That didn't just happen. Nope, that didn't happen. Oh boy. Oh, Aladdin, this is worse than that time that you leapt into that chimp! The party is over, fellas! Did... did he just say my fucking name? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Melody, we should fly. Melody, because of music. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seriously, they changed Esmeralda's name to Melody for that shitty joke. But oh well, someone saw Disney's Beauty and the Beast and thought living inanimate objects was a brilliant idea and that you don't even need to have any reason behind it besides it's magic, bitch! Hey, crack. Yeah, crack. Shut up! We have a problem here. You see, dancing is illegal. Singing is illegal. This is just like the issue in their second Beauty and the Beast cartoon. They haphazardly score with classical music that doesn't fit the emotion of the scene at all, so it just feels very disconnected. And it doesn't help that this story is a mess as well, because half of the time it feels like you're being thrown around from scene to scene rather than watching a coherent story. Mostly because you aren't. Nothing about this damn thing is a coherent story. Doing anything against the law is illegal. Doing anything against the law is illegal. Go figure. Suppose that might have been a joke. <laughs> oh, don't worry guys, the bats are still watching this scene from their day dimension and laughing without moving their mouths. Thank 
fuck they showed us that? <laughs> you... A violin is laughing at me. This is seriously my life. Fuck me. Tonight you may savor a luscious dinner for two with none other than my own glorious self. What? Dinner? I know, I know. Don't you try to talk, Esmer... Melody. You may be more important than Quasimodo, according to this movie, but still, what it's really all about is stupid talking musical instruments. The etiquette of courtship has changed considerably since my day. Ah, to go back to the good old days of the Tambourine Empire. Perhaps our friend the guillotine will remove your lovely but ill-mannered head from your shoulders. I'd say things have escalated quickly, but I don't know what the hell the mood of the scene was to begin with. LEAVE HER ALONE! Wow, he's actually doing something in his movie? But then we immediately show the crowd watching this apparently really slow hunchback run, and then he doesn't actually stop Jean-Claude Van Frollo, but another fat father joke does instead! I said you must leave her alone. That's not it, right? I mean, seriously, right? You're gonna give the tiniest amount of a shit? Oh, he's so grotesque. He looks like he's ready to join a boy band. All he's gonna do is stop hunching over and there'd be pretty much nothing odd about him. Bravo! <laughs> Fuck off with your lazy fat jokes, you piece of shit! Also, I'm not sure if Esmer Melody is white enough. Guess that's why they didn't even bother to give her the right name. She thinks about talking again, but the tambourine reminds us who the real stars are. Well, I don't suppose we might stop and rest. I also don't suppose you might know where my lisp went. Third time for this shit animation, and it won't be the last because why the hell would it? Jean Frollo crashes the party and everyone panics. Well, except Esmer Melody. She stands around smiling because understanding situations you are currently in is hard. Though, really, it's three guys on horses. I think you can take them. You will be safe in Notre Dame. The rest of us won't be, though, because reasons. These are big steps. Boy, they sure are big steps. Wow. Come on. <laughs> Instead of trying to build Esmer Melody's character at all, clearly inane banter between the stupid occult instruments is what's really important. Some of them are pulling and some of them are pushing, you dumb shit. There's a girl outside. Well, let's let her in. The Day Dimension Bats magically control the doors of Notre Dame. Not for any particular story reasons, it's just easier than actually having to animate these batshit fuckheads. Hey, there's some bad guys outside. Yeah, let's let them in too. Not. <laughs> 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 yeah, not, not funny. La yeehaw. La yeehaw. I'd rather it be British people in France than this pseudo French bullshit. <laughs> you couldn't get an actual donkey noise. Don't worry about your daughter, madam. The only person in there is Quasimodo. I told you, we do not speak of the monster! What a monster! Really, sir? Your own brother? Oh, can you please just stop adding your own stupid things to the story? Seriously, Quasimodo and Frollo are brothers? Well, that sure does make hilarious because he's fat father quite the shithead. Guess he just disowned Quasimodo because he was too handsome. Harmony or whoever the hell she is gets a line in before being overtaken by the inane banter squad, now being backed up by the day bats. Which they have gone to the effort of flipping their shot horizontally so it really looks like they're talking to each other. Don't strain yourselves, guys. Wonder if they got anything to eat up there. Yeah, we got some great munches up here, if you like bugs. <laughs>
Oh man, violins hate eating bugs. The bells, they're so beautiful. Kind of noisy. Yeah, it could be a headache. I could listen all day. <laughs> if you're into bells. They're racist against bells. <laughs> what a cute character quirk. Can we meet the one? Why did that stained glass window blink? They put effort into Fuck up! Here we go! Right up those stairs! Now come on, follow me now! Wait, wait for me! Wait for me! We can make it up these stairs! Click! Sure, come on, let's go! Click, clack, click, clack, clack! <laughs> Will they make it up these stairs? Will you give a shit? Bad's in the belfry, man. Where else? <laughs> <laughs> we are bats. <laughs> Not a single fuck was given during the production of this movie. <laughs> Enough! Quasimodo? Don't look at me! I forgot to brush my hair to perfection today! Go ahead, laugh! I know how I look. I'm a monster. Those pants with that shirt? You are a monster! I, m I made these for you. <gasps> I didn't want you to ever see me again, but I made you bells. Makes sense. Now this is one of the few moments where the two supposed main characters interact, but still this movie insists on constantly cutting to the damn musical instruments for nonsense lines. <laughs> Ugh, that is horrifying. Everything comes to life around you, Melody. Sounds like a curse to me, and yes, that's all the explanation you get for these abominations. Ding, ding, dong, ding. They then sing a song. It sucks. Well, this guy's a weirdo in a tower, but he's handsome. Marriage. That's seriously where they're going with this? <laughs> Now it's an actual donkey noise instead of a guy going yee-haw. Thanks for the consistency. John claude has taken mother. Also, she speaks donkey because... <gasps> okay, here we go. Mamma mia, she's a long way down. Why is half the dialogue about these musical shits discussing stairs? Also, the flightless fucks have to work their magic on the doors to let them out! Why? That's the question I keep asking myself throughout this. Why? Bye. Thank you for everything. That dip to silence in her dialogue was really there, by the way. Sounds like they censored her. And who the hell is Bart? Anyway, Quasi-Borto is of course gonna help her get her mother back! <laughs> Just kidding! His goal as title character in this is to be as involved as little as possible! Click 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 and clack! Pervert Rangers! The Melody Mother is held up in a barn where she is apparently torturing animals. Dance! Dance! Dance until you drop! Shittity finds her immediately thanks to Donkey Intel, and we get another exercise in irritation as scenes just feel like they go on for an eternity with how long they constantly pad them out. I just can't get enough of those stupid instruments doing nothing and inane banter all around! Mother, ah, it's you. Also, the mother is so stupid, she apparently thinks her daughter is now the tambourine. Or she just refuses to look at her. But she decides to pad her escape so long that Melody gets caught by Gaston Claude. When the bills of Notre Dame strike dawn, it's execution time! Poor mother. What will happen to her? <laughs> Oh, 
Thanks to info from ugh, Bells, the moron group hears of the execution and plan to tell Quasimodo not to ring them. There is no way Gaston Claude is really that stupid that he'll just not execute her if the bells don't ring. Oh, of course he is. And they escaped from burn jail! Somehow! Then Oliver Sands Company shows up, which by the way is the exact same cat from Golden Films Beauty and the Beast, but colored brown. Melody starts bringing shit to life, like the bars that are in front of the background bars, and if you think this is gonna lead to her escape, then you mistakenly thought there would be an actual point to her magic. Nah, she just saps everything back into place and steals their life away after her song because she's an idiot. <laughs> Including the cat? Was the cat not alive before? Oh, she had transformed it a darker shade of brown. Now it makes sense. Hurry up! What do? What do? What do? Don't waste any time. Come on. Oh, I should have retired last year when I had the chance. Inappropriate Hall of the Mountain King plus another scene with the instruments on the stairs. How oh, you spoil me? Yeah, that about sums things up. I want a bear's ring! Somebody wake up that hunchback immediately! Of course, everyone just knows about the hunchback and doesn't care in the slightest about him. That way, this movie can get every single part of this story wrong. Can we get an ETA on the uh, bell ringing? I'm random sad Jerry Lewis executioner. Is this funny yet? Are you all right? Oh, you look so handsome. Ugh, why do I bother? Did Melody just use her magic on him, or did he just brush his hair out of his eye and stand up straight? Take your pick, it's insultingly stupid either way! Just perhaps my looks really don't matter anymore. Yes, perhaps now that I'm confirmed handsome, my looks don't matter anymore! Fuck you! You are so stupid, movie! <laughs> Cool! Everyone is now rendered speechless by the idiocy on display. And for an extreme testing of your patience, instead of just ending the damn movie, they do another song that loops the beginning of this shit fest, making it the fourth time we've seen that. Then the scene continues with Marriageality. Victor Hugo always intended for Esmeralda and Quasimodo to get married at the end of the book. He just didn't have the technology to write it back then. Melody's no longer your prisoner, and neither am I. I will yell this at Melody instead of looking at you. You no longer frighten me, John Claude. If you stand up to them, they don't exist. And, uh, that's enough to dethrone Quasi Frollo, apparently. Well, this wedding scene might be super insulting, but at least it was one of the few things Quasimodo got to do in this movie. Wait, why was asshole father invited to Hunchless Back's wedding? This is just offensive, and not only because it's such a bastardization of the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but because it doesn't give a shit about its audience. I know some of these cash-in movies are pretty hollow, but this is just a soulless piece of trash. It's the movie equivalent of dangling keys in front of a child and making random noises. There is little to no thought put in the story because there's almost no story here. It's just asinine characters they dumped into the story that they thought might grab kids' attention by making noises. I feel like I should apologize to the secret of the hunchback after watching this. 
they had a few questionable moments when it came to the beauty on the inside thing, but nothing like this! Stupid fucking handsome McHunchback is the biggest fuck you to the original story that I think any adaptation could ever possibly come up with! Quasimodo's sprouting wings was less stupid than him brushing his hair out of his eyes and straightening his back and being declared now handsome. Which doesn't matter now because he's pretty on the outside. And oh, look! You can really see the care the previous owner gave to this piece of shit. Though I wouldn't be surprised if they thought this was supposed to be a pet chew toy rather than a movie. It is a much better use for it. Here you go, boy. I might be losing it slightly. piece of shit makes the dingo version look good. Wait, there's a dingo version? 